hydrate compounds. Hydrate compounds. These are crystal compounds that have molecules of water attached to them. Okay. We use the formula for water and the Greek prefixes to tell us pretty much how many water molecules are associated with the molecule it's associated with. All right. So let's look at an, an example here. We have a CuSO4 and we have five water molecules associated with it. So when we look at the periodic table, well, we identify metal and the polyatomic nonmetal sulfate. But when we look at copper, we identify that the copper has a plus one, plus two charge. So we have to use the reverse crossover in order to identify which copper did we use. And when we did that, well, we've identified the polyatomic as copper to sulfate. So you name the first uh, part of the molecule as normal, okay? So based on whatever polyatomic I was associated with them. Next step is we're gonna use the prefix, okay? Uh, the Greek prefix to associate how many waters we have. And we have five waters and the prefix for five is penta, okay? And we use the name hydrate to describe the water. So in other words, this compound is a copper two sulfate penta hydrate. Okay. So we name it normally penta, the prefix for the five and then hydrate associ is associated with how many waters. Okay. So we have penta hydrate five waters associated with the following compound. Let's go through a few practice questions and here's a moment to get a chance to pause the episode and try completing the following questions on your own. Welcome back. Okay. We look at um, the first one here, Na2SO4 and we have 10 waters associated with them. Um, so we name the first polyatomic compound is normal as a sodium um, sulfate, but because we have 10 waters, it's a decahydrate. Next one is a magnesium sulfate, okay, and seven waters associated with it. So we have a magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Now the next one, if we, we look at it, um, again, we've come across copper once before, and copper has more than one charge, so we have to do the reverse crossover rule, but we notice that the polyatomic here is a derivative of nitrate. We've lost two oxygens. You lose one oxygen from the polyatomic and it becomes an ITE ending. You lose two of them and the ITE ending remains the same, but we add hypo in front of the polyatomic naming. Okay. So in other words, for this example, we have a copper one hypo nitrite because we've lost two oxygens and we have a trihydrate, three waters. Okay, so now let's try to put together formulas based on names. So we're gonna write the formulas for the following hydrate compounds. So here's a moment, take a moment um, and try to complete the following compounds on your own. So take a moment here and pause the episode. Welcome back. So we have the first one, lithium sulfate tetrahydrate. So we name this as normal. We have a tetrahydrate, which means we have four waters to the following compound. And we get the following formula. LiSO4, uh, and it's four, um, four waters. As a matter of fact, actually, there's a little typo in this. Um, it's supposed to be Li. 2SO4. Sorry about uh, not <laughs> having that error up there. Uh, next one, magnesium phosphate dihydrate. Okay, we have two waters associated with it, and we just name the magnesium phosphate as normal. Mg3PO4 2, and that dot separating the two molecules of water associated with them. And lastly, we have potassium carbonate octahydrate octa being eight, so we have eight molecules of water, and it's K2CO3 with eight molecules of water. 